Welcome to the shop, my friend Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I've got the start to my Halloween build series for this year, an oversized spooky style top hat. Now, what's great about this particular pattern is number one, it's absolutely free and you can find it over on my website. But number two is the fact that it's super, super simple. Anyone, even if you're brand new to foam smithing, can download this, print it out, and make their own custom hat in no time. And what's also great is the fact that you can easily manipulate this pattern to make a wide variety of custom hats. So if you wanted it a little bit shorter or if you wanted the brim bigger, that's no problem at all. What's also fantastic is the fact that this hat is made completely out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials, so it's extremely light. Now, along with the fabrication of this hat in the video, I'm also going to show you how I did all of the cell shading techniques that are on here, which gives the hat a really custom and unique look. So, I want to show you what it takes to put this hat together. Let's go ahead and get started. So, I created my own templates for a custom top hat, and I'm going to use some 6mm HD foam. Part A is going to be transferred onto the foam with a pencil. Now if you notice at the bottom of Part A, it's not completely straight. These slight curves will influence the shape of the brim. I can now transfer Part B and Part C onto some 6mm foam. Both of these pieces are then cut out using utility or hobby blades. You can see how part B fits on my head right above my ears, but you're going to need to cut the inner hole so that it fits your head properly. Using my heat gun, I now can start to manipulate and round over part A. The back seam is going to be glued together using some weld wood contact cement. This is generously applied to either side and I also do my double adhesive method by adding a few drops of super glue. Both ends can now be pressed together and this makes the height of our top hat. Now I'm going to glue part A onto the brim, and I'm going to start by applying a little bit of super glue to the front and the back of the piece. After the adhesive is set up, I can then go in and add some more glue along the edge of the foam. By not gluing the whole brim on at the same time, this allows me to work on the sides and get those subtle curves. Part C is going to make up the top of this hat, and if you notice, this piece is larger than it needs to be, and that's because we're going to glue it on and then trim away the excess. So just like the brim, I'm going to glue the front and the back onto the top of the hat. Once that had set up, I could then apply some more adhesive and glue both sides down. Now with the excess material, I start by trimming the bulk of it away with some scissors. This will make it that when I start to refine it with the rotary tool, I'm not having to remove as much material and therefore not creating as much dust. Along with the top, my rotary tool was also used to clean up the brim. A heat gun is used to lightly seal the foam. And then I apply more heat to the brim so I can start to round it over. This will give the brim a more interesting shape. So if you have a smaller head but you still wanted an oversized hat, you can do this trick on the interior. I'm going to cut a strip of 6mm foam about 12 and a half inches long. This strip is going to be glued to the interior and will make sure that the hat doesn't fall down any further than the strip will allow. I wanted to add some faux cloth around the base of this top hat, and to do that I'm going to use some 2mm foam. This strip is cut about 6 inches high, and I use some adhesive to glue down and round over the ends. I can also add additional adhesive to the middle of the strip, and this will make it look as though the fabric is folded over upon itself. Now of course you could use fabric for this process, but I had some additional 2mm foam on hand and I wanted to see if I could replicate the fabric look. So the foam is wrapped all around the base of the hat until I get to the very back where it's tucked under. The additional foam that I have can then be glued and folded together to replicate a bow at the back of the hat. And this is exactly why I love foam so much because you can use the material to replicate so many different types of surfaces. For the front of the hat, I'd like to make some feathers, so I sketch out a basic design on some Bristol board. This template was transferred onto some 2mm foam and cut out. I also cut out some small strips for the middle of the feathers. Using some Bob Smith super glue, the strips are glued to the middle of each feather.
Using a smooth sanding drum, I rounded over the strips and the sides of the feathers. Taking my hobby knife, I score some light striation lines into the foam. These lines are going to open up once a little bit of heat is added with my heat gun. Then to give the feathers a little more worn and weathered look, I go back with my hobby knife, add more lines, and even cut some chunks out of the foam. Feel free to add more weathering and more heat until you get the look that you're going for. Once I get the feathers exactly where I want, I start to glue them all together. This bunch is then tucked behind the cloth that I have in the front. And once I'm happy with the position, super glue is added to glue them into place. I'd like to also add a cartoony skull to the front of this hat. So I again sketch out a basic drawing on some bristle board and then transfer that onto some 6mm foam. This skull is cut out and then cleaned up with a rotary tool before I add some 2mm foam to the back of the eyes and the nose. After everything had set up, the skull could then be glued to the front of the hat. The same process was then added for the bones that are going to wrap around the sides of the hat. Just like the skull, these are more comical and they have a cartoony appearance to them. The bones are also transferred onto some 6mm foam and then I use my sanding drum to round over all the edges. After a light heat treat, some super glue is used and then I space the bones out evenly on either side of the hat. Now even though all of this is cartoony, I still want to look as though everything has a purpose. So I cut a strip out of some 2mm foam. This strip is going to go all around the perimeter of the hat, making it look as though it's locking all the bones into place. This is a fairly simple process, it's just adding a bunch of adhesive and then following the contours of each piece. To simulate some fake rivets, I'm going to be using a small hole punch on some 2mm foam. Now if you don't have a basic hole punch like this, you could also use a leather punch or you could sharpen some brass tubes. To prime and paint this piece, I'm going to start by adding a couple of light coats of Plasti Dip. To paint, I'm going to start by covering all of the bone pieces and the skull with FX brand Desert Sand. Now this paint is a little thin, so two to three layers are going to need to be applied. For my faux ribbon that I have around the base of the hat, I'm going to be applying FX brand Voodoo Violet. This paint is also a little thin, but I allow that to work to my advantage. After I paint on the base layer, I allow that to dry. Then I'll go and I'll add additional layers of paint to the folded areas to give it more volume. FX brand Bloodline is then applied to the strip that wraps all around the outside of the hat. To add my highlight layer to the strip, I'm going to be using Liquitex brand Cadmium Free Red Medium. Now the pigment count of this paint is very high, so a little bit goes a long way. And as you can see, I'm not painting it all over the entire surface. I'm picking out my highlight areas and I'm blending those into the darker shades. I wanted a contrast on the feathers, so I'm going to be using Liquitex brand Cobalt Teal as a dry brush. Now the main thing to note here is that I'm not adding any additional water to the pigment. FX brand Blizzard can now be used as the highlight for all the bone and skull sections.
This color is also used on the very tips of the feathers. To paint a faux metal onto all of my rivets, I'm going to be using FX brand Samurai Sword. This is applied with a very small filbert brush and even smaller detail brush for the sides. To give this entire piece that cell shaded cartoony look, I'm going to be outlining a lot of the pieces with FX brand Carbon. This paint is watered down quite a bit so that the pigment flows really well. And then using a liner brush, I can outline and start to add characteristic marks to all the sections. There's no really right or wrong way to do this. If I see a fold or a shape that I feel needs to be addressed as a detail, I'll outline or add a few little quick marks around that section. I want to take a moment to thank all my Patreon supporters, and if you are enjoying my content, as well as the free templates that I provide, and you want to help out the channel, feel free to join my Patreon. You can also donate through my PayPal, and of course, go through the links that are in the description section to pick up some HD foam from Blick Art Materials. Not only is it some of the best foam that's on the market, but you're also helping my channel continue to grow, which allows me to continue to do awesome things like this, give you guys free templates, and show you how to put it all together. So thank you so much for your continued support. For, for shadowed areas on the bones and on the skull, I'm going to be using FX Brown Grounded and a detail brush. So those that have followed me for a while know that I love cell shading and I get a lot of the inspiration from my Borderlands builds. Just like those builds, one of the main characteristics are white highlights. And to accomplish this, I'm going to be using FX brand Blizzard with a very fine liner brush. You don't need to add this everywhere, a little bit goes a long way. Now after I'd added all this, the hat itself was looking a little bare, so I decided to go back to my comic book roots and determine what highlight would I use for black. So in this case I used Liquitex brand Brilliant Blue. This paint is applied with various types of brushes, but it definitely gives it that comic book cartoony feel. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own Halloween custom top hat. Now again, the templates for this are absolutely free and you don't necessarily have to build this. You could use those to make your own Mad Hatter style or whatever custom hat you would like. Now if you are building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.